It's great to have you here, sir. Now, the state of Georgia, once it got involved, fairly quickly, within about 48 hours, asked the federal government, the Justice Department, to look into this case. What would, what would you like to see them uncover here? Well, first, I'd like to say to Georgia's Attorney General Carr, uh, thank you for your very quick response and reaction to what is clearly a murder from my perspective. I had an opportunity to speak with him yesterday, and he's looking into four different episodes within the, the chain of, of command as it relates to the case. Number one. Number two, I think the Department of Justice, the Federal Department of Justice, I spoke with uh, Attorney General Barr yesterday uh, and encourage him to get involved as well since the Georgia Attorney General asked for the DOJ's involvement too. So what I'm looking for is frankly justice and transparency. I want all the facts to be illuminated. The videos are quite damning without any question, but every sequence of this case should be understood by the public, especially the six-week delay as it relates to this case coming to light. Um Speaking of that delay, uh, you, when you first heard about this and understood the case, you, you tweeted very movingly a, a message about how you felt personally about it. Um, maybe you could share that with all of our viewers now. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dana. I, I was just three weeks ago taking a look at some new construction in South Carolina, some really nice houses. You know great houses in Bluffton, but also great houses in the Charleston area. And I just imagine if someone said they called the police because I was looking into a house and I ended up laying on the ground in the middle of the street at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, shot to death by two guys, one with a 357, another one with a shotgun, riding the back of his truck, what kind of crime did I commit? Uh, and when I saw that, I reflected back on James Byrd in 1998, Emmett Till, and the history of such activities happening. And I thought to myself, this is a horrific uh, occasion, but a wonderful opportunity for me to highlight the importance of A, progress being made, and B, the reason why progress is so necessary under these fairly clear circumstances. And Senator, um, there is no hate crime law in Georgia. Um, do, do you think there should be? Well, I certainly am glad that there are hate crimes in our country. And frankly, the application of those hate crimes in a very similar fashion as we saw in the Charleston shooting, uh, thankfully, the federal government stepped in as well. And I'm hoping that we'll see the same okay. type of application of justice from our nation. Uh, Senator, I understand we have got some breaking news here. This is a Fox News alert. Apparently, the acting director of national intelligence has just released the names of Obama administration officials who requested the unmasking of Michael Flynn. On the list, apparently, is former Vice President Joe Biden. Again, I'm reading this cold. Um, others, former FBI Director James Comey, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, and former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Samantha Powers. Mm. Um, sir, obviously, you're getting this information just as I am. Any thoughts about this development? Yeah, this kind of sheds more light on and reinforces the fact that something, there's a stench coming from this investigation and the president, President Obama, writing a letter trying to keep those uh, records at the university uh, sequestered, as well as trying to keep a lid on so many of these steps or missteps in the investigation, seems that we need to have more light brought into this subject. And frankly, the fact pattern is really concerning. And I understand now even more why Vice President Biden has been trying to step away from this situation. Senator Tim Scott there to talk about one story and end up talking about another and helping us make some news. Thank you, Senator. Yes, ma'am.